Hello, welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by MagnaCraft Consulting Team, anchored by Niyi Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Niyi Dumade. Yes, good morning everyone. Good morning to everyone in the side where I reside. Um, it, in Abuja, it's morning and I say good beautiful morning to everyone um, for wherever you are in the face of the earth. Okay, and today is another beautiful Monday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm welcoming everyone to this live broadcast show. Uh, don't, don't, don't mind that there are little itches that we face, internet issues, queuing issues, scene issues, but I want you to welcome all our viewers to this live broadcast show, and thank you, thank you for hooking up with Monday Morning Matters, just to kickstart your week with something that will help you and your church greatly. We are so glad 
that you are part of this live broadcast. And I'm Nidu Made. I'm the CEO and founder of Magnicraft Consulting. Okay, I'm also a certified church consultant with the lead. Uh, with, with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. So I'm saying a big thank you to everyone who is um, commenting, liking our posts on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, especially. We're able to hit 1,000 subscribers. And please go below the, um, the, the bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, get to our Instagram, our Facebook page, do some likes for us, please. Share to a pastor, share to a church staff, share to a, a Christian, and I'm sure they will be happy to get the content we're sharing for free, okay? Thank you for reaching out to us, those who are chatting with us on the instant messaging of our social media handles and, you know, getting to find out who we are and um, um, asking us questions. And a big thank you to um, those who are inviting us for trainings, okay? Trainings, please, you, you can't demand from your workers, you can't demand from your own congregation, you can't demand from your leaders what you have not put inside of them. If you demand something you have put in, you can only make a withdrawal from an account that you have actually put something into it, okay? So we have been talking on the church God blesses, the church God blesses. And so if you have missed the last two episodes, please go back. Today is a part three. And so we're going to go deep down into what we need to discuss for today. All right. And so um, the church God blesses. The church God blesses. Okay. In Magnicraft Consulting, we have a mantra. A mantra that says doing church God's way. You see, church is not about a man's vision. It's not about a man's objective. It's not about a man's preference. The church is God's. And if it's a church is God, God is the one that will detect how the church should be run. Please, can somebody just let me know that the sound is good and the visuals is good. Let me just know that the sound is good and the visuals is also good. Okay, sound is good. Thank you. Sound is good and clear. All right. So, please, um, the mantra that we have is doing church God's way. Doing church God's way. You see, God is the one that mandated the church. And that's one of the characteristics of a local church that God blesses. That the church that God will bless, a church that God will approve, is a church that is following the mandate of God. You see, if, you are, if a church is living in disobedience, there's no how God will give an approval to that kind of church. There's no how you're going to secure God's blessings over whatever you do. So one of the characteristics of the local church is the, is the church is a mandated church, okay? They are doing all and exactly what God wants that church to do. You see, one thing about obedience is, obedience is not something that you do more than the instruction or less than the instruction. Obedience is doing all and exactly what God has called you to do. So one of the things that God has called the church to do is to is the great commission. And one of the things that, have, that has really broken my heart in the time past is ha having our local churches embark on the great omission attitude where they do nothing about the great commission they don't have that care and love for their neighbor and their uh, and their communities all right so doing church god's way if you are going to do church god's way then you are going to end up securing god's blessings if you're going to do church god's way sure you're going to get god's kinds of results so the second characteristics i said there are eight characteristics of a local church that god will bless eight characteristics that the church that of, of, a, of a local church that god approves one is a mandated church the second one is the glorious church. God likes to bless a church that is beautiful inside out. Okay? Attractive, beautiful, all right? Glorious, all right? The world will only get attracted to something that is glorious. We will only get attracted to something that is beautiful, all right? So one of the things that God blesses is when a church is glorious, all right? This third one has to do with zealous. It's a zealous church, a zealous church, a zealous church, 
Okay, they are, in, in, in this end times, what we say we should be zealous for every good work. Okay, God is instituting the church because there are certain things he wants to do. And I, I'll just speak prophetically, he wants to bruise the head of the serpent. But you see, bruising the head of the serpent is a sequence of activities, is a sequence of steps that God wants you to do. And you have to be passionate. You have to be compassionate as a local church. You have to be zealous as a local church. You see, one of the fears I have is we the church majoring or minor and minoring or major. You can imagine a church knowing how much came into the church, but they don't know how many souls that came into the church. You can imagine how many how many churches know the attendance of the church, but they don't know how many disciples there have been matured in since they started. So what I'm saying is zealousness is necessary in you securing. The blessings of God. The united church. God, he wants us to be united. That teamwork, collaborative as well, cooperating one another to, to have that agreement within the laity, congregational agreement, congregational teamwork. God gives his approval on churches that are united. So the united church, I want to wrap, run through the four again. If you missed what are the first one is the mandated church. So a church that is given to the Great Commission, doing exactly and all God wants the church to do. The second one is a glorious church. You see, God, the world is already in disarray. The world is already uh, in, in, in confusion. And we need something beautiful. We need something attractive. We need something glorious. And the church is what the, God wants to use. And so when he uses that, they saw how God will use you to reach out to the world, reach out to the community, reach out to the neighborhood, and God does not bless you. The zealous church is also a church that is given to good works, given to giving palliatives, good words, reaching out in evangelism, in outreach, in ministry efforts to the community. And then we said for the united church, they are given to love, they are given to agreement, unity in all fronts to make sure they um, advance the kingdom of God. So the other one is a loving church. The loving church. They love souls with a passion. They are willing to be discomforted. They love souls. They love souls. And so you can see when, when they love souls by how much they put to um, evangelism, how much they put to discipleship, the commitment they put to discipleship. So loving church. They love souls. You see, Christ cannot love souls so much to give his life for them and the body. The body does not love souls, okay? Love souls, especially sinners. Let them come to Christ. Let them come to the body and let them see a church, a local church that is given to loving the souls with a passion to go out of their comfort zone, out, out of the status quo, to reaching out to those who are on church and who are unsaved for Christ. The other one is the excellent church. Okay, God does not want, you see, there are sometimes I get so pained where we have church leaders who are talking down on government, whereas the way they run their church, just a small church, there's still issues. <laughs> there's still rancor, there's still conflict, there's still disorder, there's still things that does not glorify God, okay? So God wants an excellent church, an excellent church whereby the nations of the world can come to the church to learn leadership principles, to learn administrative principles, and to learn things that will advance the kingdom, advance the nations of the world from where we are today. Right now, the world is in need of good, of, 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 of institutional leaders that can move the world from where it is right now to where God wants it to be. So one of the things is that the church must be excellent. Excellent in everything. Excellent in everything because you don't know what the church is exhibiting that can be a stumbling block for souls to come into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The excellent church. The seventh, the seventh one is the growing church. You see, in Genesis 1 verse 26, God want, wants us to multiply. He blessed us and said, be fruitful and multiply. There is no, even Jesus Christ came to the fig tree. And when he saw the fig tree, he's expecting that the fig tree should be fruitful, but the fig, fig tree did not have any fruit to, pro, to, to provide him. And so there was a cost. You see, but the thing is that how glad will it be that Christ should come to your church and is able to see fruits that are remaining. And he's able to see souls and he's able to see 
with disciples. Okay? Growing church secures God's blessings. Fruits to show. Fruits that abide. Fruits that remain. Okay? Making and maturing disciples consistently. You see, I know family churches who disciple, who disciple um, people and after a while they shelve that away. Uh, you see, you have to mature and make disciples consistently, consistently. Growing is not something that is past tense. It's a present continuous tense, okay? You should find ways at which your church is growing. And when you set up systems and structures that helps your church to grow and grow and grow, you are going to continually receive and, uh, and secure the approval of God. The last day out of the eight characteristics of a local church that God approves and God blesses is the healthy church. Ah, as a cultural consultant, I like to, that's my juice, the healthy church. All sound churches, so uh, all sound churches have a way of securing and advancing. See, the truth about it is that God will never use a church that is unhealthy. You can imagine. Um, God seeing an axe that is blunt, okay? He prefers to use an axe that is sharp so that I can actually do the work that requires haste and urgency, okay? The, the work requires haste and urgency. So the healthy church, healthy church, healthy church, healthy church, you cannot just take in anyhow. Your, your doctrines must be sound. Your pulpit must emanate good and um, rich content for people to grow in the Lord. There must be prayers on your altar. There must be all kinds of... I think we have a framework at which we help churches grow healthier, okay? Uh, uh, this is just descriptive from scriptures. And so as a church consultant, I like to um, use these descriptive futures from the scriptures as being prescriptive. This is from the early church in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. The top side of the fishbone diagram has prayer, ministry, uh, evangelism, discipleship, fellowship, and worship. Okay? And see, one of the things I tell my churches that are, uh, uh, who cares to invite me, there must be some form of balance. We know that evangelism is important. We know that discipleship is important. But you see, every other thing, so like when you have a heart that is very important, you have your lungs, your kidney that is very important, but we still need some other, other um, functions of the body which will help the main functions to actually perform at its peak. Then we have the bottom side of the fishbone diagram that is more organizational or administrative. That's the resources. We have the onboarding, also the same thing as assimilation, outreach, leaders, um, structure, and strategy, okay? We want all these things to be balanced in your church. I run through them again. One has to be to a church that is given to the mandate of God, a church that is zealous for good works, a church that is united with teamwork and agree agreement to God's agenda, a church that is loving enough to go out of their comfort zone, to reach out to the community, a, a church that is united, a church that is loving, a church that is excellent in everything they do. They don't want to say because this does not require um, so, um, money and so they, they do that with levity because souls are ad attached to the way you run your church, everything is important. Everything is, 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 is should be taken with an excellent attitude. Then we has also have a growing church. A church is should be given to producing fruit, producing fruit, producing souls, producing disciples, making them, making disciples and maturing them in the faith consistently. And lastly, is the what? The healthy church. The healthy church. The healthy church. The healthy church. All right. So two things, two points I'm going to say here in the next 10 minutes. And then I will wrap up this broadcast. And then next two Mondays, we're going to wrap up strong on the church that God bless. You see, one of the things why you, not just the leader, to be taking this broadcast very important is because you, can, you, sh you, shouldn't, you can't be blessed going to a church that has not secured God's blessings. Okay, so you, you, knowing some of these things will help you to know the kind of church that you, that secures 
God's approval. Okay, I traveled to the southern part of Nigeria, specifically Port Harcourt, to do a training for a large group of, 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 of workers, volunteers in that church. And I noticed in that city that there were a lot of churches. In fact, if you, as I was driving from the airport to the, to, the, to the church, I could see a lot of churches. There were many churches. Now, one of the things I want to say here is that you can have many churches. doesn't mean that all the churches have secured God's blessings. You can have many churches, doesn't mean that all those churches are approved of God. Okay? So let's just don't say because there are more, then God is actually working. You can have more, but God is working through a few. Okay? There are, there are many does not mean that all of them are actually taking all these eight um, characteristics I mentioned. Or there, there are many does not mean that all of them are blessed of God. I don't want us to lead a dying church or a declining church or a depressed church, a depressed ministry, a dying ministry. I believe that you don't also want to lead or manage a dying church or ministry or a depressed church or ministry or a declining church or ministry. In order for your church not to become a dying church or ministry, you need God's blessings. You need to secure God's blessings. You see, God is the one that is the head of the church. One of the ways at which you can cut yourself off is when you are trying to struggle the, um, the, author, the place of God in how that church is run. The place of God in how that church is run. The place of God on how that church is run. So give God his place. Okay, God's blessing is a seal of approval. Okay, God's blessing is a seal of approval. His presence is talking of favor. Okay, and practical manifestation of his visitation. Bible says, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, there will I be in their midst. And that results in growth, transform lives, miracles, breakthroughs, signs and wonders that occurs in that church. Now, don't get me wrong, you can have all these things and God does not give the approval and blessings on them. But there's no how you, God's blessings can be on the church without having people's lives transformed. We can having God's presence manifest and God's favor uh, uh, upon that church in an expressive mood. Okay? No man can grow a church without the blessings of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, it says, I planted, that's Paul speaking, I planted Apollos watered, but God that caused an increase. So you cannot, you cannot conjure the blessings of God. You cannot bless a church in the place of God. You cannot um, um, create a kind of pseudo blessing that, that is of God. Okay, you no man can grow a church without the blessings of God. No man can actually fulfill the heart, the beats of God, the heart desire of God, uh, without just securing the blessings of God. Churches that God blesses will bless the people of God. So when God blesses the church, there is a, a higher chance that that church will be a blessing to the congregation and also the blessing to the community. All right? Blessing to the community. It's going to bless families. It's going to bless people and be a blessing to the community. Be a blessing to the community. So that's what the early church had. When they started the church in early, early church, you could see that the blessing of God was so strong for the early church that they were now becoming a blessing to the community. Okay? A blessing to the community. A blessing to the community. Okay, that's what the early church had. If you go and read the Acts of Apostles chapter 2, the Bible says the souls were added daily. 3,000 were added. 5,000 were added. Multitudes were added. They were actually making the impact. They were actually blessing the people in the community. So though the church starts small, yet that's the early church, they started small. From that small, they started blessing the community. And they grew. They multiplied. They saturated the whole world. Then in few years, okay, a few though there was a form of inwardness, and God brought about a persecution in Act of Apostles, and then people like Philip went to Samaria. They said going, they scattered abroad, and they said sharing the gospel in the nook and crannies of the world of of the earth. Okay, so the the the, the early church was small, but they were able to secure God's blessing, God's approval, and, and God's blessings 
to be a blessing on the on the body of Christ and to also be a blessing to the world at large. The last point I want to just wrap up the last point is here. What signs will you notice when God's blessing is absent? What signs will you notice when the blessings of so as a local church, what signs will you see that God's approval is off? Because the truth about it is that once God's approval is up, you need to know so that you can be able to do certain things, be certain things, have certain things that will secure God's blessing. Yes, there are churches that show the absence of God's blessings. There are churches that show that God actually is not in approval of what they are doing. So when the blessings of God is absent over your church, you will see things like this. Okay, man-made effort. You are struggling. You are doing all kinds of energy. You are exerting so much, but you are not seeing anything. Okay, because the truth about it is that running a church is beyond just your physical energy. Running a church is much more than man-made effort. You need to deploy your spiritual um, energy. To be able to secure God's blessing. Two, stagnation, preservation, and retrogression. Okay? You can't see um, fruitfulness anymore. You can't see. You are, you are, you are living in the, in, the, in, the, in the past of glory days. You are complacent. Com- so complacent with past success. All right? You, 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 you are not looking up to the future because the future is actually brighter and better than the past. Okay? There's stagnation. You, you don't want to, there's no improvement. There's also a preservation of what has happened in the past. There's retrogression. Okay? Physical beauty is, is not there anymore. Okay? But spiritual, uh, you can see physical uh, beauty. You, you have, um, how will I put it now? Um, beautiful auditoriums. Okay? You have, you have some of our auditoriums sometimes are now competing with clubs. Okay? The beautiful auditoriums, but the spi- their spiritual destitution. Okay? There's so much of beauty, but inside is dead. The Holy Spirit is actually not in their midst anymore. Okay? There's so much of religiosity that is devoid of the power of God, of the life of God, of the touch of God. Okay? There's lifeness, lifelessness, there's death, there's routine that does not produce any result, there's powerlessness, and there's also ritualism. Okay? Few are far from testimonies of the true transformational change. When a, when a church is living, you could see practically people, you could see true transformational change in the life of people. It's true transformation. You see testimonies. I'm not, I'm not talking about testimonies when the, the church was in the time past, but on a, on a periodic basis, as you, uh, you, you continue to live your life, in, uh, live the life cycle of the church, you're going to see testimonies of true transformation, not few of them, but much more of them, of true transformational change. And lastly, demonic deceit, heresies, wrong doctrines, and bondage. And once you have that in the church, there's no how you're going to secure God's blessings. So let's make sure that our, our creed, our, our doctrines are sound to help people grow and mature as, as disciples. And that will help us to be able to secure God's blessings in no time. So these churches desperately need the blessings of God and we can help you. We can come as a church consultant. I'm a certified church consultant. I've been trained in the U.S. and we can come to help your church. You see, I'm, I won't be so quick to prescribe it for you, but we first of all get a good proper diagnosis of what the church is going through. And then we start beginning to give you recommendations or prescriptions to help your child become vibrant, lively, and growing again. Please, I want to wrap it up here. I've hit the 30 minutes um, time. Please help us to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're building a community in the YouTube space. We're also building, we have, we have hit the 1,000 in the YouTube. We also hit a couple of thousands uh, in, in the Facebook page. Please, I beg you, do those two things for me. Go like us. So when we come up with well, there's, there's so, so many good things we're going to share, uh, okay, Men, and they're going to be free on Facebook and on YouTube especially. So please feel free, share this to a church worker, share this to a church pastor, share this to a church staff, and I'll, I'll, I'll be, uh, my heart is going to bless you for it, okay? So thank you. On the screen, you can see YouTube, get the um, subscribe 
uh, button and hit the bell and when so that when there's an upload or a, a live um, streaming, we can be able to get get that notification that a, a new video has been uploaded. Thank you for everyone for allowing me to come to your space this morning. Um, thank you for those who are standing by to listen to me. Please, we're gonna do this again next week Monday, same time seven. AM GMT time, uh, GMT plus one, and we're going to just beam again live on this platform. God bless you. I love what you're doing. I'm so glad that a lot of our churches are still standing strong despite the um, the pandemic um, effects on the local church. We are still standing strong, trying to do the needful to reach out to the community and fulfill God's desire. In the in our in every of our Jerusalem on earth. Thank you so much. I, I want to just get, get it off from here. My name is Nid Made. I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. Magnicraft Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps churches grow healthier through empirical assessment training and strategic blueprints. Okay, we help churches to diagnose to give some good recommendation. We are like just like a church health guardian to make sure that you become healthy because when you get healthy, there's nothing you cannot um, um, achieve by be just being at your best, at your peak, at your, at your, at your all-time best performance. Okay? Thank you. I want to sign off of here. God bless you. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much.